everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, thank you very much to ARC for inviting me to celebrate your birthday with you. So ARC was very important to me when I was a PhD student. It's even more important to me now as a lecturer. And uh, it's wonderful to see 20 years of um, data and research being um, shared so widely and to such good effect. Um, it's a particular privilege to follow John Curtis. Um, I'm a senior fellow in UK Interchange in Europe alongside John. And when I went to the interview for that position, um, I walked in in the, in the, uh, in the room in um, London and I saw John Curtis in the waiting room and it took all of my nerve not to turn around <laughs> straight away. <laughs> I think it was hopeless. Anyway, they had more than one place going, so um, it's a great pleasure to be a senior fellow alongside you, John. Um, so I'm going to focus on, uh, obviously, the question of Northern Ireland using Northern Ireland Life and Time Survey data, as you'd expect me to... Um, coming from ARC, and um, I'm uh, presenting work here that I've done along with uh, Milena Komarova and Ben Rasha, so thank you to you both for your help in this. Um, so really I'm just going to concentrate on a couple of things, primarily the question of where Northern Ireland's agency comes in all of this. So when we think about the future of the Union, we know that what Northern Ireland can uh, do in relation to that is have a majority in favour of Irish unification. Um, so I'm going to look at that um, uh, look at the data that we have on that, not in a great deal of detail, just to bring out a few key points. Um, and I think a couple of key things that I want to mention is the question of, well, what does that majority look like now? And as you'll have no doubt become aware recently, uh, a clear change in, in Northern Ireland Life and Time Survey data recently has been that the majority of people in Northern Ireland feel neither unionist nor nationalist. So I want to explore that a little bit um, in terms of what their views are on this matter. Um, and my headline point, I think I am going to mention Brexit, you'll not be surprised to hear. Uh, my headline point is that um, the views of the majority in Northern Ireland do change according to context. They are responsive to goings on, so it's not a purely ideological matter. And indeed, in relation to John's point, it's not purely about identity either. People do respond to context. And then in light of that, of course, Brexit does change everything. Um, and it's very clear, even if we look at what data we have in the last few years, that people are responding to Brexit and the, what Brexit seems to mean, and therefore also um, responding to that in light of what they think Irish unity, um, uh, the prospects for Irish unity and how they feel about Irish unity in light of Brexit. So I'll just present a little bit of data on that matter. Um, so this is the these are the this is the overall trend that we have from uh, NILT uh, since 1998 about that big headline question. Basically, what do you think the long-term policy for Northern Ireland should be? Um, and we can see the blue there is remain part of the UK. Um, we had the question added um, in 2007 about distinguishing between whether um, it's de devolution in the UK or direct rule, so I've added that there. But essentially, uh, we can see from this that very clearly the majority of people in Northern Ireland think that the long-term policy for, for Northern Ireland should be uh, uh, within the UK. We do note from this that, as I say, people are responsive to context. So um, the times at which we see um, a peak for those wanting Irish unity um, are when we had Stormont failing or a sort of a crisis point for Stormont. Uh, so in the early 2000s and then again um, for the St Andrews Agreement, 2006, a crisis. We haven't seen that happen in the last few years when we had the suspension of Stormont. Um, instead, what we had was a rise in support for direct rule, which is interesting, which suggests possibly, and this is the limitations of quantitative data, we speculate a wee bit, uh, but it suspects, uh, it in, indicates possibly that people's uh, views about um, Stormont and its, uh, its desirability uh, relate to people's views on whether they can trust what goes on there, whether they think it's a good form of governance and representation. Um, and so this was, now I'm presenting the latest data that we have from NILT and um, we look forward very much to, the, to, um, to June when we're going to present the 2019 results. Uh, but until then, th these the, this, is the, this is the latest data we have from Northern Ireland Life and Times. And we can see the finding here from, from that, from that same question about the long-term policy for Northern Ireland. 
significantly, we have 16% don't knows, I think. Um, and I'm thinking of that data that we saw produced, um, presented yesterday in the Belfast Telegraph from the election survey from John Tong and others. Um, and again, don't knows in that was, were very significant at around 21%. So again, this is a question of where are they going to go? What makes their decision for them? Will they vote at all? That's a, that's a good question. And then if they do, which way would they go? Um, biding their time and waiting to see what it actually means is, is something that um, we need to allow for, I think, when speculating about all of this. I'm just going to skip over. So the question is um, about what happens to those who are who say they're neither unionists nor nationalists. Um, as a sociologist, I'm always very cautious about this question of uh, demographic change vis-a-vis -vis in relation to religion, automatically meaning a change in political viewpoints, and I'm very cautious about that. More accurate is this question of um, those who identify as unionist or nationalist, obviously, because that relates to that particular question. And what we've seen over time fairly steadily, although not, uh, um, uh, not uh, um, consistently, but it's this growth of people who say that they're neither unionist nor nationalist. Um, and I've done a little bit of work on that, um, partly with Ben and partly with Carl McManus. Um, I can talk a bit more detail about that if you wish. But essentially, we've seen this critical change um, last year where they, they outnumbered those who say they are neither, uh, uh, th those who say that they are unionist or are nationalist. And this is a breakdown of that. Um, one thing that's interesting from this graph is that we can see that um, those who are, those who, there are people then who are describing themselves as nationalist but don't want a united Ireland. Um, given that that United Ireland point was 19% um, last year. And similarly, we see that a lot of people want Northern Ireland to remain in the UK, but they don't describe themselves as unionist. Um, and we see that um, um, consistently over the last 20 years. Um, so that question of the soft unionists who don't necessarily think of themselves as unionists, um, but you are happy with Northern Ireland in the UK, what happens to them? Will that change according to context too? That's an important question to ask. Okay, so on to the Brexit stuff. So this is looking at that question of um, how Brexit affects people's views about Irish unity. Most particularly, we'll start off with that matter of whether it makes a United Ireland more likely. Um, and we can see from this, I've broken it down as a unionist, those who describe themselves as unionists, as nationalist, or as neither, because there are interesting trends here. Now, one thing overall that I haven't shown here is that we see a significant decline from when that question was first asked in 2016 compared to 2018, <clears throat> the latest results we have, a significant decline in those who are saying it makes no difference. So increasingly, people are thinking from all backgrounds that it makes United Ireland more likely. Um, and if we think about the way that the Brexit process unfurled, i.e. it wasn't necessarily in the way that we anticipated, not at least because it took longer than anticipated, uh, that's possibly worth bearing in mind that actually, as things went on, indeed as people insisted the, this, the, that had that focus on the Irish border, that it began to affect people's views about whether it made a United Ireland more likely. In particular, people were no longer sitting on the fence or less likely to sit on the fence. Increasingly, they thought it was more likely. Um, and uh, we see here nationalists very starkly thinking that it makes United Ireland more likely. Um, one thing I haven't um, presented here in graph form, but if we looked at what happened between 2016 and 2018 amongst party supporters, again, this kind of reflects that trend. So in, um, uh, actually, I did go on to talk about, I'll save that, I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. So essentially we see um, unionists primarily think it, it makes no difference, but that has shrunk since 2016. If we look at those who are saying they're neither unionist nor nationalist, again, we see that overall trend. Um, so they are increasingly thinking it makes Irish unity more likely. The big question is, though, you may think it makes it more likely, but do you want it to happen? And that's where, of course, we see that critical distinction arising. So this is done by party supporter. So um, essentially, we've got the unionist parties grouped here, um, the, the nationalist parties, and then alliance, and then those who say they vote for no party, 
and they don't support any particular party. Um, so these results are from 2018. Um, and in, uh, 20, in 2016, there were, it was 64% of DUP voters saying that Brexit made no difference. So we see a big drop there in, in the number of DUP supporters saying it makes no difference. Increasingly, the DUP supporters are saying it does make a difference. And particularly, that trend goes towards thinking it makes Irish unity more likely. Um, similarly, we also saw a change amongst um, Sinn Féin voters, too, thinking that it makes it more likely. So in 2016, 42% of Sinn Féin voters said Brexit makes no difference to Irish unity. And um, that's dropped down to 20, 24% by 2018. So a very stark drop in, in those who think it makes no difference. Um, uh, overall, this is looking at party support, but overall we see that um, there's the same amount of people think that um, it makes no difference or that it makes it more likely. So 35% of people in Northern Ireland responding to this say that they think um, uh, United Ireland is more likely as a result of Brexit. The interesting thing is those who don't want to see it but you see that it is made more likely by Brexit. And then we move on to the critical question, does it make you more in favour of Irish unity? Um, overall responses, um, again this is from 2018 so we'll be looking forward to seeing the 2019 results but overall responses from NILT were saying that 18% of people, of respondents, said that it makes them more in favour of Irish unity than otherwise. 56% saying it makes no difference. Um, what we do see amongst unionist respondents is that it makes them less favour, less in favour of Irish unity. Mind you, they weren't in favour of Irish unity to begin with, they're increasingly against it. And we see this also reflected in the question of, do you consider yourself to be a very strong unionist? Um, that has significantly increased in the past few years. If people think they're very strong unionists, that's grown. So we see that hardening of a position, of a unionist position in some quarters in response to this flux and change. Um, and then, again, unsurprisingly, we see amongst people who support nationalist parties that they're increasingly in favour of Irish unity as a result of Brexit. Now, I mentioned those who are neither unionist nor nationalist. They don't exclusively support Alliance Party by any means, otherwise Alliance would be um, <laughs> storming it right now. But what we do see is something very interesting, is that they are almost as likely as Sinn Féin voters to think that Irish unity is, the prospect of Irish unity is greater as a result of Brexit. This is a really interesting finding, and it's more so than even SDLP voters. They think Brexit makes Irish unity more likely. And also when it comes to whether they're more in favour of it, um, almost 30% of them saying they're more in favour of Irish unity as a result of Brexit. This is a really interesting finding, I think. So the question is, what will they do? What will the middle ground do? And this is something that we're keeping an eye on now, I think, not least in political terms, um, partly because if you look at what's happening in Northern Ireland, compared to the South, compared to uh, the, the rest of the UK, you see an emergence of the middle ground. It's a kind of almost a radical place to be. We see that emerging in, in political voting. Now, whether this will be sustained or not, we don't know. It's too early to say. But it's an interesting point. So the question is, what will the neithers do? And if you're looking at those, those train, trends over time, it suggests they will be responding to context um, um, and to essentially what Brexit turns out to be like um, over the coming 11 months, um, <laughs> two years, etc. cetera. Um, in June, we will be presenting the results of the 2019 survey, and I'm particularly excited about those because we've got more detailed questions in relation to Brexit. We've also copied some of the questions that John has been using in the British and in the Scottish social attitude surveys. So we'll be able to do some interesting comparisons, and yeah, it's great, from the various parts of the UK um, to try and see how distinctive Northern Ireland is or not when it comes to answering these really important questions at a really critical time. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.